Today, it's recap time for the movie The Invisible, released in 2007. It begins with what looks like a big celebration around Nick Powell. His mother, Diane, stands up and says that it was not easy raising Nick by herself after the death of Nick's father. She adds that Nick has grown up to be a wonderful man. Diane then raises a glass to her high school-aged son. Nick gets a gift with his name engraved on it and walks away from the main table. He gets to the food table and cuts the center out of a cake that says congratulations, Nicholas. He carries his portion to the garage and sits next to a workbench. All of a sudden, he pulls a shotgun to his face. It turns out all of that was a dream, as a sweaty Nick wakes up startled in the morning. His mom has prepared two eggs and bacon in the shape of a smiley face. As she reads the newspaper, Nick asks her if she has thought about the writing program in England. His mother replies that she doesn't need to think about it, as Nick knows how she already feels about it. After breakfast, Nick bikes to school. There, Nick hands a finished French essay to a fellow student. Nick asks if he wants to know what's written in the essay, but the kid says he doesn't care. Seconds later, a girl named Susie comes up behind him and asks him if he is coming to Ava's party. Nick says that he is busy and has some other plans. Soon after, a gang of bullies pressure Pete Egan, another student, in one of the school's restrooms. Annie Newton, the gang leader, accuses him of accepting things without paying for them. She threatens to cut off his finger if he doesn't pay them back soon, and the bullies leave. In class, one of the students reads a poem. After he is done, the teacher asks Nick to follow him, reciting the poem he wrote. Nick starts speaking, and the entire class is engrossed in his recitation. However, the bell rings before he finishes, and everyone takes off. During lunch, Nick talks to Pete and finds out he's in trouble with Annie and her gang. He then approaches Annie's group and pays for the stuff that his friend took. After asking Annie if that is enough, she tells him to get lost. Just before walking away, he bends down and whispers in her ear, you are so broken. All of a sudden, Annie snaps and jumps on him in the cafeteria. As a result, both of them are taken to the principal's office. The principal demands to know what happened, and Nick jokingly replies that Annie finds him attractive. The man orders the girl to go home and then tells Nick that he should not waste time on people like her. Annie then returns to the flat where she lives with her family. She immediately reprimands her stepmother for not feeding her little brother, Victor. The woman complains to her father, saying that's no way for a kid to talk to a grown-up. Since he agrees with Annie, the couple ends up arguing. The girl retreats to her room and makes sure that her little brother is fed. She puts on headphones so as not to hear the fight in the living room. Later that night, Nick meets up with Pete. He asks Nick if he is going to Ava's party, and Nick replies that he can't make it. He then passes a book to Pete, concealing an airline ticket that will take him to London. He shares the details with Pete, explaining the writing program. Ever since his father died when Nick was 13, he claims that his mother's ways have been suffocating to him. In the meantime, Marcus Bohem, Annie's boyfriend, goes out with her to commit crimes. Soon after, he breaks into a car. After seeing Annie stare at a jewelry store, he tells her not to even think about it. However, Annie recklessly walks over to the store, breaks the window, and steals some jewelry. They flee in the stolen car, as the police search for them. The next morning, Annie and Marcus argue over the jewels. After Marcus asks her to leave the bag behind, she ignores him and takes it all with her. Furious, he calls the authorities and informs them that she has been stealing at school. Later that day, Pete is seen monitoring Annie at her school locker. The cops eventually show up at the school and break into her locker, finding the stolen jewelry. Soon after, Annie calls her boyfriend and informs him that she has been arrested. She claims to know who did it and proceeds to say she'll take care of it. Nick and Pete cycle back home and discuss Nick's upcoming trip. Pete says that he wants to go to London as well and that he wants to become a cricket star there. Nick playfully reminds him that he has neither the passport nor the money to afford the ticket. He then bids farewell to Pete. When Nick gets home, he finds his mother sitting on the couch in great discontent. She promptly informs him that the airline called to let him know his flight has been rescheduled. Nick says that he can explain everything, but his mom simply replies that it feels like she has been living in the house with a stranger. Later that night, Annie and her gang pressure Pete to admit he's the one who sold her out. Scared, he puts the blame on Nick, who's supposed to be on his way to England by then. In the meantime, Nick is at Ava's party, flirting with Susie. He finally shares his plans with her and lets her know his flight leaves in about two hours. They soon start making out, and she discovers a new watch in his pocket. After she asks why he isn't wearing it, he tells her he prefers the one his father presented him with. 
He then leaves the party and begins his walk home, only to be followed by an old, creepy car. After he makes a run for it, it turns out that it was Annie and her goons. They start beating up Nick as Pete looks and cries from the car. He repeatedly begs them to stop. After Annie asks Nick, who's the broken one now? He responds, you are. Enraged, Annie kicks his face and causes him to hit his head against a rock. When the gang checks to see if he's breathing, they instantly think he's gone. They all get terrified, not knowing how to proceed. Annie steps up and says that they need to pick him up and dump his body elsewhere. As he's being carried, his watch falls to the ground. They open a storm drain, dump his body inside, and walk away. Shortly after, Annie knocks on Marcus's door. As he opens it, she promptly confesses to him that she killed the guy who sold her out. Marcus tries to send her away, claiming he's on probation, but she urges him to provide her with an alibi. She rubs her bleeding palm all over his stolen objects and exits the place. Annie then goes to the river and burns her clothes. The next morning, Nick emerges from the bushes and heads onto the road, looking just fine. As he gets to class and talks to people, he notices that no one can see or hear him. He eventually tries to make a mess to draw attention, but to no avail. As he moves around in school, he hears his mother's voice on the phone by the principal's office, asking for information on her son. When he leaves the school, a car and a truck hit him in sequence, but nothing happens to him. Shortly after, the authorities begin investigating his case, and Nick is considered a missing person. He continues walking through town, unnoticed by anyone around him, and even tries to tell his mom that he is dead. Detective Kate Tunney and Detective Brian Larson go to the Powell's residence and question Nick's mother. Not long after, the detectives observe tire tracks near the woods and also find a broken part of a car on the ground. When the cops hear about the past altercation between Annie and Nick, they decide to go pay her a visit. They find Annie sitting on the roof and ask her about Nick's whereabouts. After she denies having anything to do with it, the cops tell her to contact them if she remembers anything. Back in the Powell's house, as Diane reads Nick's poetry journal in his room, a bird hits the glass wall and is severely injured. After watching his struggle, Nick soon notices a live bird on his shoulder and grabs it in his hand. All of a sudden, as the bird's life comes to an end, the bird in Nick's grasp vanishes. That's when the boy realizes he must still be alive. In the meantime, a search party to look for Nick in the woods is formed. Nick attempts to help the group by influencing the search dogs, but they don't notice him. As the search continues, Pete is on the edge of disclosing what really happened, but the gang threatens him not to. Later on, Detective Larson visits Marcus in his garage. He inquires about the jewelry shop robbery, but Marcus claims to know nothing about it. When Larson asks about Nick's case, he also denies any involvement. Some time later, Marcus points a gun at Pete and informs him that he is being followed by the cops. The two of them head back to the woods where Nick was last seen, and Pete shows him the location of Nick's body. The next day, Marcus gathers Annie's gang and persuades them to deceive her, setting up an encounter. Not trusting them, she calls Pete and tells him to be at the rendezvous as well, so she may watch them from a distance. However, Marcus finds Annie and holds her at gunpoint in front of the gang. He tells Pete to get out of there. Annie then boldly puts the gun to her torso and tells Marcus to pull the trigger. Suddenly, one of the boys yells, cop, and Annie snatches the gun. She points it towards the officers and starts to run as the police ask her to stop. After doing some climbing, she manages to escape. As Nick yells that they will catch her, she responds, never. Nick is baffled that the girl actually heard him for the first time. After spending the night in the school gym, with Nick also kind of present, Annie goes to Nick's residence. She goes through his stuff and examines his belongings. As she drips ashes from a little container into her palm, Diane enters the room. A startled Annie immediately runs away. Annie then rushes into the woods to the spot where she last saw Nick, only to find that someone moved his body. When she notices a nicotine gum pack, she realizes Pete must be involved. Pete then reveals to Annie that neither Nick nor he turned her in. Desperate, Annie urges him to say who moved Nick's body. After Pete spits it out, Annie tracks down Marcus and drags him to a ledge. She holds a pistol to his head and makes him disclose Nick's location. As she turns around to go save him, Marcus pulls out a gun and shoots her. Annie then shoots him while still on the ground. Badly injured, Annie calls Detective Larson and shares Nick's location with him. Elsewhere, Pete tries to take his own life by ingesting some pills, and Nick discovers Pete's soul standing next to him as he dies. Luckily, Pete's father arrives just in time taking him to the hospital before it is too late. The cops eventually find Nick among some rocks, 
and the boy is rescued. An ambulance drives him to the hospital, barely alive. Despite the bullet wound to her abdomen, Annie strives to get to him. As time passes, her condition worsens, and she starts hearing Nick more easily. His spirit leads her down the corridors to him, avoiding the cops. As Diane sees her, she's tempted to get the police, but Annie soon reveals things that only Diane and Nick know, gaining her trust. Nick's mom then allows Annie to go inside the room. As Nick's spirit returns to his body, Annie lies next to him, and they get to chat for a minute. Shortly after, Annie passes away due to her bullet wound. Time passes, and Victor flies a remote-controlled airplane. Nick observes the kid, concerned about his safety. Victor reveals that he was supposed to be there with his sister, but she's gone. Nick then proposes that they send her a message. After writing Hey Annie on the plane's wings, they send it off to fly. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.